Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. Let me read it again. Jehoshaphat stood in the midst of the people, and he said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. I want you to believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. But then also he says, I need you to believe his prophets, and so shall ye prosper. Our thought is the decision that changed my life. You may be seated. The decision that changed my life. I want to make this declaration as we go forward. That we are standing on the choices of our faith. I'm going to say that one more time. We are standing on the choices of of our faith. Our faith has been the catalyst for many of the choices that we have made. But make no mistake, on the opposite end of that continuum is fear. And so then there have been some choices that we made out of fear. Fear has been the catalyst for some of the choices that we've made. And as we are on the threshold of completing our preparation, we must consciously decide to which one will we consistently walk by. Are you going to walk by faith or are you going to walk by fear? But make no mistake, you cannot walk by both of them. And so then you must know that there is an expectation from God that we will walk by faith, hence choosing faith to walk by. We cannot move to the next place, the next realm, the next dimension, unless we make the decision to do it by faith. Because it is our faith that is going to open the doors to the things that God has called us to do. Faith unlocks doors. Faith is a key. Faith is a platform. Faith is a doorway. Faith is a means. It is a catalyst. It is how God moves. Faith is a currency. It is the mechanism by which God moves, changes things. And so we who are spirit beings, we who are called by God, if we're going to see things that have been prophetically declared, if we're going to see things that have been promised through the word of God, then it's going to come when we use or exercise our faith. The Bible says in the book of Daniel, I want you to see this. Daniel, the 11th chapter, verse 32, the B portion. This is what he said. He says, but the people that do know their God yeah. shall be strong and do exploits. This is what he said, Brother Eric. He says, the people who know their God, it is those individuals who shall be strong in the midst of adversity and do great exploits. And so then, as a believer, I must understand that God expects me not only to use my faith, but to know that my faith is what causes me to do exploits. Yeah, yeah. It is these exploits, this is the deeds, the achievements, the accomplishments that God is expecting from us in order for you to carry out your purpose, your assignment. Then you must use great faith. I'm not talking about ordinary faith. I'm not talking about just the faith in God, but the faith of God. And so then if I'm going to do 
exploits for God, if I'm going to do great things for God, they only will come by way of my exercising of faith. Many of us have heard God call us to great things. Many of us have seen in visions that God has called us to do great things. But the manifestation of those things which have been revealed will come by way of faith. Because it comes a time at when in the believer's life uh, that we must demonstrate whose side that we are on. And the demonstration of that comes by way of faith. In other words, uh, when I decide to do something uh, that ordinarily I wouldn't be able to do, when I make a conscious decision uh, to do something that goes beyond my skill, my intellect, my wit, my wisdom, my pedigree, my education, my economic style, when I choose to do something that folk tell me, T.T. Joyce, you can't do, uh, that's when I begin to show that I do know my God and that I'm going to be strong in the midst of that negativity because I understand that rejection uh, is going to come from the people who don't know me but it's also going to come from the people who do know me and from the people that I've been sent to help. Yes, yes, oh, yes, yes, yes. God has called each of you uh, not just the pastor, not just the first lady
God. You're not crazy. You just created him. I wish I had somebody in the house that would understand that God has called you. I wish you looked at your neighbor and said, he's talking to you. He's talking to you. You need to start creating some stuff. There's some books you're supposed to create. There's some movies you're supposed to create. There's some businesses you're supposed to create. There's some blueprints you're supposed to create. There's some plays you're supposed to create. There's some CDs you're supposed to I wish I had somebody in the house that said, Lord, I hear you talking to me. There's some stuff that I'm supposed to create because I've been made in the likeness of my creator and my creator has made me to create. Create. This is why God has told me to be careful what I say because my words, just like his words, have framed. My words have the ability to be you. My words have the ability, oh my God. Uh, this is why some of us are trying to get over not what folk have done, but what they say. Oh, they ain't done nothing to it, but they said something to it. Uh, and see, you can't get them words back once you release them. I know you didn't say it, I'm sorry. I know you said you weren't going to do it no more. I know you said forgive me. But the fact of the matter when you release those words, because you are a creator, you created something. You created something in my mind. You created something in my womb. And make no mistake, whatever is planted in the womb will come to form. Listen what he 
says here. He says in verse 3. He says, giving no offense in anything, that the ministry be not blamed. He says, but in all things, approving ourselves as the ministers of God. Watch. In much patience, in afflictions, in necessity, in distresses, in whatever you're going through. What he says is, we put no stumbling block in anyone's path, nor have we allowed our ministry to be discredited or blamed. Because in everything we do, we show that we are true ministers or servants of God. Even in the midst of what we're going through. See, one of the things as a believer is because God has said that I'm going to bless you, because we've sang the song Overflow, because we've high five three people, because we slain all all over the place, because we've marched around something seven times, we think that absolves us from trials. Not realizing that the trials have a significance. And so Paul says here, make no mistake, we did not allow what we were going through, the persecutions, the afflictions, the imprisonments, the stresses, the attacks that came on our life. We did not allow those things to cause us to step, watch this, to step outside of our consecration. We did not allow what was happening to us personally affect our spiritual outlook. Are uh, y'all hearing what I'm saying? Uh, he, he says, we, 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 we went through some things, but because we understood we were ministers of God, and that we were authorized and sanctioned by God to be an ambassador, we understood that there was a level of accountability and responsibility that went with our that we understood that even though we were going through, we could not use it as an excuse to not be faithful, to slack up, to turn our focus on ourselves, to stray away from the house of God because I'm going through something. You know how we do. As soon as stuff started happening in the first place, we stopped going into the church. As though the church was the problem. As though God is the one that caused the problem. As soon as headaches start showing up later, Benton, the seats get empty. And Paul says that I understand because I, I, I knew, watch this, saints. I knew, say, when I made the conscious decision to say, for God I leave. And for God about me because I understood that my life was just as much as a testimony as my word oh my god uh, you, you want to tell people how to deal with adversity show you want to tell people how good God is show what you're going through you want to show people or tell people how bad God is and you want to give them scriptures to read and give them devotion Yeah. 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 The preacher got to live up here. Yes, sir. Yeah. I can live down here. Uh, yeah. 
but I ain't called like he called. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, it's, it, the calling just simply means we have a different responsibility. Mm -hmm. But what God has given you is just as valuable. And if you understood what God has given you, then you wouldn't take it anywhere. <laughs> oh my God. See, some of us don't understand what God has entrusted us with. This is why we leave it at home sometimes. This is why we pick it up sometimes. This is why we use it sometimes. This is why we think about it sometimes. This is why we're conscientious about it sometimes. Because we don't think God has given us nothing. Because it doesn't have a title to it. Because it's not on the stage. We don't think God has given us Nikki, anything because it doesn't have a mic with it. It doesn't have a picture with it. It doesn't have a website with it. When the truth of the matter, this is why he said, you are supposed to do exploits. And so then, we have to realize that, ooh, okay, God, I understand that I can't casually drink. I can't casually smoke. I can't casually get high. I can't casually cuss. All right, all right. Yes. I ain't talking to none of y'all in here. Just, just the people watching the face. And because we don't understand the magnitude or the value of what I'm carrying. See, see, it's it just like a woman who's who's pregnant. All of a sudden, now she becomes more sensitive to her environment. Where she may have been around people who used to smoke. Now she's like, mm -mm, you got to put that out. Oh, I can't come around you because you're smoking now. And I understand what I'm carrying is so precious and so sensitive that if the smoke that comes out of you can tamper with what I'm carrying. That's it. That's it. And so some of us walk around as though we're not carrying anything. All right. My goodness. We're saying and doing anything because we don't believe we're carrying anything. Come on. And so when Paul says, understand, I recognize that I'm not to be a stumbling block to people because, watch this, saints of God, can I just tell you something? For some of you, you may preach them. He said, well, I don't preach to them. Yes, you do. Every day you show up. Every day they hear what comes out of your mouth. Every day they see how you live. You preach it to them about your relationship with God. See, if I want to know what kind of relationship that you have with God, then I may not be able to get to the church, but I'll be able to just hang with you for a few days. And if, 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 if I want to understand how, how valuable God is to you, I'll be able to stay with you a couple of days and somewhere hanging around with you, I'll hear something about God come out of you. Because we have to understand that I got something great on the inside. Yes, yes. And see, what we are doing is we're allowing what we go through to silence or to stifle our exploits. Yeah. See, <laughs> see, some of us are waiting to God deliver us, then I'm going to do something great for God. Right. Who told you that? <laughs> what did you read that? God expects us to do something great while we're going through our trouble. This is why your mindset ought to be, I'm not going to let my trouble have the last say so about me. I'm not going to allow what I've gone through to write the last chapter about my life. Because what I've gone through or what I'm going through is not the end, the finale of, of my life. But make no mistake, that's not who I am. It's just something that's happening to me. This is why Paul said we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not despair. We are persecuted, but make no mistake, we are not forsaken. We are cast down, but are not destroyed.
or did God choose the trouble with me and mine?
you to know I let Pharaoh live. Why? So I could show him my power and that my name may be declared to all the earth. What are you saying, man of God? What does that have to do with me? God let your haters stay around. I wish I had somebody. God let your adversaries stay around.
what do we do? Because we want to work the works. He said, believe. We're doing everything else but believe. You gotta believe, saints. Yes. 